All right, welcome back. This is a little bit of future me here because I forgot to mention this in the video you're about to watch. When you do a recording of a flyby in Dystopica, you have to use a recording software separate from the game because the game doesn't record it for you. I will be using OBS to do this. You can use whatever you choose. I will link down in the description all the free programs that I use for this so that you can uh, make this flyby for yourself. We are going to do a tutorial today about how to do the video flyby in Dystopica. Now this is going to be a multi-part thing because I'm not only going to show you how to do it, we're going to take the result from this, put it in a free program called DaVinci Resolve, and we are going to create the actual flyby with an overlay, an overlay that I have made. You can pick any overlay you want, it doesn't have to be mine. But I have one, I'm going to show you how to do that today. I'm also going to show you how you do picture overlays. You've got a nice screenshot of your Dystopica City or some other game city and you want to put an overlay. I'm going to show you how to do that with a different free program called GIMP. So the first thing, and this is all opinion based, I'm no expert at any of this, and this is all based off of the launch state of the game. The developer has talked about continuing to do more things, but this is not an early access game. This is at full launch. Anything else he does is all just pure bonus for us and makes us all happy. And the photo mode extension is scheduled for version 1.2, I believe, in the roadmap. If I can find the roadmap, I'll pop it up on screen. That will allow more. We don't know what more yet. I don't know that Matt knows what more yet, but more, more control. Right now, we don't have a lot, so I'm gonna show you what you can do. In my opinion, I would start with weather, time of day, and all that jazz. The reason I say this is the controls within photo mode are so sensitive that it'll go from daylight to nighttime instantaneously as you're moving the slider, and it's really annoying to get set just right. So weather's a pretty standard thing. The weather you can change very easily inside of the program to make it do more than what you're doing or to make it do less. It's the time of day that's really the problem. So think of the time of day as your color palette. You've got default and that's kind of a white blue color. You have sunset early. This gives you more of an orange tone. Sunset late and you're looking more red. Nighttime's obvious. And then dawn is more of a purple, purple, blue color. So if you want one of those modes, you would set that. I'm going to set it to nighttime. It's going to work best for my application. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hit photo mode. Now you notice it immediately froze. You can turn it back on by hitting the play icon up here. So you have all these controls and what you can or can't do with any of them. The first thing, and this is something that is important. So I'm over this, right? And I've got it set. If I just hit the W or the arrow key and I go forward, you notice how it's slowly creeping to the right. And I just got stuck. I can't go any further. That has to do with the zoom. It's actually really annoying the way it works. So what you want to do is you want to set it where it's going to go perfectly straight over the highway or whatever run you're wanting to do. So that's off a little bit. Okay, still off just a hair. And I'm holding right mouse and moving just a little bit each time. The issue is it's not directly in the center of the screen. I think that's going to be it right there. Okay, so now what you need to do is you need to either zoom all the way in, and you notice it goes down, that's okay, or you need to zoom all the way out. It doesn't matter which one you choose, but you need to do one of them. This gives you the full control over your path. So if you look here, I'm stuck. I can't go any further forward because I zoomed all the way back. If I zoom all the way forward, I then have to go up here to this icon and I have to change my height.
change my pitch a little bit. And so now if I zoom back, sorry, now if I scroll back, let's go up in height some more. Nope, gotta go more. We want to come up over the sign. Right about right there. Let's go up just a little bit more. I think it's kind of nice to have this building start right here and give us a little bit. And we, we've got a good view of this. Maybe we're making this as a helicopter, for example. I want to test the pitch. So, so we're going to take get some idea here of eye level. And I want to see. It looks to me like it's still pitching downward. It is pitching downward. So we'll get, get our reference here. We're going to come up just a hair. We're going to pitch it. That looks better. First off, let's get rid of Lensert. I hate Lensert so much. Okay, that seems pretty good. And I'm just using W and S to move backwards and forwards, not using my scroll because I zoomed all the way one way. It has to do with the boundary of the city. But it is kind of annoying that it won't let us just continue forward backward because that's how you get your continuous level movement. All right. So now that we have a good understanding of the direction, the path, it's going to fly at a nice thing. Now you change things like exposure. Pit. I'm not going to go into all of the different angle things you can do. But you can make it foggier and all that stuff. Really, I'm just going to show you how you make this actually function. But one thing I don't love is I don't love the all the streaks being so intense. I like them a little bit, but not so, so much. Close, fine, scatter. Rain intensity, let's bring the rain up. Let's go all the way, that's fine. This whole time of day in Sun Direction, man, it if you get really good at it, it works great, but otherwise it's, it can be a super pain in the butt. So now this is what I want. I want to set a duration from here to there, and we're going to call this, let's say 30 seconds. You can go up to one minute, but we'll call this a 30 second run. So we're going to run for 30 seconds across there. I'm going to set position A as this right here. So now I'm going to just use W or the arrow key. I'm going to go all the way forward to our end point and I'm going to set position B. I'm now at position B. We're going to set that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit play, and then I'm not going to talk for, for this thing. Now, there is a problem still with photo mode. When I hit play, you see my cursor here. It's still going to be visible. So you want to hit play and immediately scroll to the right as fast as you can because you're still going to be visible. And if you notice, you can still see it on the left. It does go away at the, the bottom, but does not go away at the top or the left. So you want to scroll all the way to the right or all the way to the bottom. I find to the right best. Perfect. So now it has ended, and you notice it left us at position B. I could actually make 
another A to B using this position B as a point set. But the problem is, if I were to do that, nothing in here is going to be exactly the same. It changes a little bit of this little color fluctuation you see here in this fog. Maybe this guy's going to do something different. The glow would be different. These would be a different position because it isn't continuous A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and it you set a ball and then you just let it run. That's one of the big things we're hoping the developer gives us in the future. Even if that's all he does, that will make videos much, much better. So now that we have all that finished, we'll get into the how you do the overlays. I've got to cut that, that chunk of video out so we can make our overlay with it. All right, we are here in DaVinci Resolve, and this is 18.6, I believe. I have opened this up, but I haven't put anything in here. I've not imported anything that's important. We're going to come all the way down here to the bottom. I'm not going to go over everything about how to use DaVinci Resolve because I don't know how to use DaVinci Resolve that well. And there's plenty of people online that are experts at it and you can just look up tutorials. But I'm going to show you the basics. The two things that you may need to know about are these two settings right here. Master setting. I play video games and I record in OBS at 1440p. So that's what I have it set to. I also do this at 60 frames per second. This is the master setting. My DaVinci Resolve will default to this every single time I open it up unless I change it. Image scaling, scale entire image to fit. It's the only thing I ever change. If I want to do a square one, I'm going to do scale full frame with crop because I'm going to change this to say 1024 by 1024, whatever it is that I'm making. Uh, for Dystopica, it'd be 480 by 480 because that's a popular thing for some of the uh, sizes in there. So we are going to open up the file that I cut. I cut out the little flyby that we did. So dragged it over here down to this. I have one section right here for video. So here's our little flyby. You see it works. Now I need to right click over here. I need to add a track. So we are going to go back into this. We're going to import another piece of media and let's do a kind of fancy cockpit. Let's put a Starfield cockpit in here. So now we have this big old cockpit and you know what? Man, that takes up a lot of the screen. Let's not do that one. That one's just a little too much for my liking. So instead, let us import the Spaceborne 2 Zlumsky cockpit. I like that better. Now, the this radar doesn't function even in the game, so that's nothing special. But you can see that it doesn't cover everything. It stops right over here. So all we're going to do right here at this edge, you see how it changed these brackets right here? And here's the end right over here. It's ended up being 29 seconds. I had to clip a little bit of the first of me dragging my mouse cursor over the screen. So I'm going to grab this, and I'm just going to pull like this. Till I get close enough, then I'm going to move this out of the way because sometimes it, it does auto snapping a little weird. So now we're good all the way to the very end. Click back over here. Now this would be where if you decide you want to put music to it or something like that, you're going to go to edit. I find this the easiest way. We see audio two down here. You're going to drag an audio clip down here and then you're going to mute this. You'll click on this, hit mute. You'll put if assuming you don't want the game music playing and you'll put your music track down here. I'm not going to put a music track for this uh, example. This is meant to be a very basic tutorial about how to do an overlay. Uh, get into more detail like how to do an overlay on top of an overlay on top of an Yeah, that's that's a lot of work. So we're going to deliver it. Our overlay. Then we're going to browse to the same spot we made it. I want to do this in MP4. H264, yes. Auto, yes. Your sizes will default based off of your master settings. We're going to hit Render Q, and then we're going to hit Render All. Then we sit and wait for a little bit. This is going to take, you can see right there, about 8, 10 seconds or so. 
All right, it is now finished. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna go to our picture, we're gonna go to our lady, our overlay. We're gonna play and see what happens. Now we have a cool looking, but a little uncanny valley because the cockpit doesn't move. There's nothing, a light in it because it is just a picture. But you can see, we now have this overlay that we put to a video that we recorded Currently has game music, but you could add different music if you like. And you could add things like a little bit of uh, of it playing something there. You never know. There's, there's all kinds of cool different things you can do with it. But that gives you an idea of what you can expect to make. I don't know what I'm button, buttons I'm hitting. What you That was OBS, by the way. This is the recording software. How you can do overlays very simply if you want to get into more complex honestly you're going to have to look at the internet because i'm still learning the more complex stuff um, i don't know if i can show you real quick let's see this is more complex there's music with a sound you hear that like D -d 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 there's a sound of like this quote helicopter. Then there's this video overlaid on top of this image, overlaid on top of this video. And this comes from four separate clips that I stitched together from A to B to A to B to A to B. It's not very good yet because I have the timing of this run off. Like this run isn't very good right here. Let me turn this down. Um, it's too too long. It takes too long to get here. So I, I put the time too long to get the uh, duration right. But it gives a really good sense of scale. The radar portion is phenomenal. It, I did a really good job with it. I had to do a pitch. So I shrunk this down to the size to fit. But it was square. I ha And this is a trapezoid. So I had to pitch it forward to get it like this right here this uncanny valley is just so weird it's like it's like it's sliding 90 degrees right it's so weird and watch how it changes the environment as soon as it clicks between clips even though it has a to b correct because it's not continuous you know i it B and then I stopped and I hit A again and then I went down here and I picked a new B and then I hit play while I was recording it. It's two different time periods in the video game that's still playing in the background. So things changed like the fog, like the glow on these, the traffic changed. And so it's, it's jarring to our brain how it changes like that. And so I'm still kind of working on this. I've still got to keep redoing this. I've got the cockpit in great shape. I might add a little bit of the lights right here, maybe something going on with this. All right, now you can see we are here in GIMP, and what we are going to do first is we are going to open up. Now you'll find whatever place you put it. I just stuck it here in pictures, made my own little section for it, and we want an apartment view picture. So this is a screenshot from my game. You can see it says to Lindsay right there. Now I want to add over that Let's say I want to add an apartment. So I want to look like I'm living in my city and I'm staring out my window of my apartment into that. So this is the H10 Mega Building in Cyberpunk 2077. I have already cut out the window you can see there. I'm going to click on that. I am going to hit Edit Copy. I'm going to click back to the image I want to put that on. Edit, Paste As, New Layer, and we're done. This. Tutorial is simple. I'm not going to get into how you would actually manipulate the back image. Maybe I want to move it. I want to zoom it out, make it look like I'm further away, bring it in closer, etc. Change lighting or anything. This is just how do I put one image on top of another image. So now we're going to file. We are going to export as. It's going to stay PNG. I'm not going to change that. I'm just going to add a name for it. Let's say V's just Topica. So here is the important part. This save background color will normally be like that. You want to turn it to that. This will normally be set to one. I leave it at zero. Zero means there is no compression. It just exports the image as it sees the image. 
and that means it may be very large. Uh, that This overlay image is 14 megabytes. So we're going to export that. I'm going to pull this up right here. This is the folder we have it, and we're going to take a look. And there it is. So now I have an image where I'm standing in Cyberpunk 2077, looking out the window into the Dystopica city that I built. Very cool. But let's say an apartment's not really your thing. You want to do something different. So let's say we're going to come up here. We're going to undo paste. Let's open up. How about the tram in Cyberpunk? So we're going to click on that again. Edit, copy. Click on the picture itself. Edit, paste as, new layer. So now, because of the angle, and you can't see this from the picture, this is close to being directly over the highway, it looks like this tram is riding along the edge of the highway, which it probably would as it visits various districts, and zooming along, and I'm just here sitting. This is the arm of my actual character in the game. Very cool. But what if we want to do more of, let's say, let's say we want to do more of a vehicle. So we're going to do a vehicle chase. And we want this, our vehicle is going to be flying over this, whether it's a helicopter, a plane, a car, flying car, doesn't matter. So now we're going to get in this. It is the same process. And let's say we put in this guy right here. This is from Spaceborn 2. It is the starter ship called the Zlumsky. We're going to do exactly the same thing, same process. And so now it looks like I am in this helicopter-like ship flying over. Maybe I'm, I'm the police and I'm flying over making sure nobody's doing bad things. Or you might want... How about the uh, Cyberpunk 2077 car from E3? So that's very cool. You have a, quote, flying car. I mean, in fact, there is a mod that allows you to have flying cars. But you have a flying car in your dystopica world. Or maybe you like something from a different universe. How about... How about we do some uh, Starfield, a spaceship in Starfield, and we pop that over your Dystopica. This is what you can do by having a transparent layer. So cockpits for spaceships, for planes, for helicopters. You can do it with cars, buses, trams, tanks. It doesn't make any difference. You're taking the windshield and cutting it out in a program like GIMP here, making it a transparency, and then allowing that to be placed on top of a screenshot of the game that you choose or a screenshot from whatever you want to put. Maybe this background's Tokyo and you want to act like you're in a cyberpunk car in traffic in Tokyo. It doesn't matter. It's all the same in every way. And this is what I have on my Patreon. This is one of the things that I do, one of the quote, what I call the nerdy things in gaming, is I make these transparent overlays for you to place over either any of the hundreds of screenshots I've taken, all of these are 1440p by the way, or any of the ones you do. So that's gonna be it for this short little basic tutorial about how to do overlays.